In this video, we are going to be taking apart a fine piece of British history, the Dyson dc one Dual Cyclone Vacuum Cleaner. Right, so let's strip this thing down and see how it works. This isn't a how-to guide on how to take apart your Dyson. It's simply just an educational video on seeing how these machines work internally. So we're gonna start off by removing the bin right here and the accessories. Lift the cyclone all the way up until it unhinges from its pivots, like so. And now the cyclone has been successfully removed. Remove the filter, pre-motor filter, and the post-motor filter. I'll put the cyclone back on because it looks nice and gives it character, okay? Just in case you guys are wondering. Remove the sole plate. So now at this stage, you can see how the brush bar works. The brush bar spins at high RPMs by this motor inside its housing. There's a motor spindle, which is connected to the brush bar via this belt. Brush bar out. There we go. And here is a Dyson YV motor. That's the true size of it. Inside the switch housing, this is what it looks like. You got the power switch. Taking apart the cyclone now. There's only one single screw in this entire unit. The shroud is securely locked into place. So what we have to do to remove that is that. Yellow button right here. And the hose just pulls out the back of the machine. Right, now here's a DCR1 all stripped down. Not fully, but just enough to show you how it works. Okay, mains input by this beautiful plug through this cable directly to the switch. You saw what it was like in there, just boring stuff. Spinal cord goes all the way down to the motor housing. Two wires connecting directly to the YV motor. By the way, that right there is the thermal overload cutout. So when the motor overheats, it just prevents a vacuum motor from turning on until it cools down again for about half an hour, maybe an hour. Now here's the motor itself. So when the motor is on, it spins really, really fast, spinning this spindle right here, and also spinning this impeller or fan right here. This spins at such high speeds, it gathers tons and tons of airflow. And the suction and airflow have to reach from the base of the vacuum that's touching the carpet, all the way up to the motor. And I'm gonna show you how it does that right now. So the motor right here has two functions. First of all, it gives you suction and airflow. Secondly, it also powers a brush bar right here. Now this brush bar has bristles that protrude the base of the vacuum to reach down into the carpet fibre roots to not only revitalise your carpet, but also scrub your carpet as well and separate the pile. This also gives a sweeping motion on your carpet. When the motor spins, it turns a brush bar with this belt. Now when the brush bar spins, you'll notice that the bristles are in a spiral shape. This allows for the dust and debris to be guided into the suction inlet right here. Here you've got a pivoting sole plate design, so it's designed to stay in contact with the floor at all times. Suction airflow comes into the base of the sole plate, goes up this tube, so this piece of ducting right here, comes out the opposite end of the sole plate. It mates up with this huge opening right here. Now this is a really clever design as part of the changeover valve because when the vacuum is in the upright position, this huge opening gets blocked off by this curved section of the cleaner head. And then the suction has no choice but to go out of the hose. So when this huge opening for the suction to reach the head of the vacuum gets blocked off, the vacuum can't breathe anymore. Suction does not go to the hose unless you pull the wand out because right here, you can see the bottom of the wand blocking the air path off. The airflow is meant to go through there where the wand is to reach the hose. But because it's blocked off, when the wand is in the vacuum, there's no suction at the hose until you pull the wand out. So when I pull the wand out, the airflow can now come out where the hose is, right over here. And the dust and the air travels all the way up, coming out of here. See how the air path is angled? It's angled like that for a reason. So it spins against the walls of the cyclone as it enters. So when the dust and the air enters the cyclone, it spins around in a cyclonic vortex action. This bin right here, is your first cyclone. So approximately 90% of the dust and dirt gets captured in the bottom of the bin and it spins around. The dust in the air then goes through this shroud right here, traveling up through this narrow gap, as you can see. It does a whole U-turn in this shape right here. And then entering the secondary cyclone, which is where the cyclone turns into a cone shape. It's a cone shape because the airflow multiplies in speed. 
So as the walls get narrower, the speed accelerates. So as it enters a cyclone right here, you can see what it looks like in there. It spins round and round and round and round. The dust comes at the bottom of the cyclone and falls into this chute right here, which is a secondary bin. This is what people fail to understand. This is a secondary bin. And all the fine dust gets captured in the bottom of the bin right here. And because this is sealed, thanks to this thick gasket and one at the bottom of the bin insert as well, there's no airflow at the bottom. This part's not meant to have any suction. It's just an opening chute for dust to fall out of. Then the air exits the cyclone through this little chimney right here, up through the top, out of the cyclone, down the spine of the vacuum. The air then gets filtered out by this filter right here, which is basically one of these sub-micron filters. And then the air goes directly to the motor fan, keeping the motor cool. And then the air gets blown out of the exhaust where the post motor filter is and out through the vents of the front of the vacuum cleaner. So that's pretty much how it works. Now let's put the machine back together then. In case you're wondering how the upright lock mechanism works, is basically there's a huge rubber roller wheel in there. Is it rubber? No, just plastic actually. But there's a groove here in the motor housing with a huge dip in there. So once a roller wheel falls into that dip, it locks into place. And this big foot thing just pushes the head up away from the floor. And these bleed valves right here, these are just spring-loaded little valves that open up to let some air out so that the cyclone can keep on working when the machine is blocked. Okay, let's see if it works. And here is a DCL1 fact some of you might not know. So inside here, where the blockage inspection port is for the holes and wand, just right where I'm pointing right here, some DCL1s have this feature where there would be a triangle shaped valve for the end of the wand to press into when the wand is located back into its position. So when that valve is pressed, suction goes inside that valve and then it allows the motor to breathe out of these vents. And that's a Dyson DCO one now all entirely fully assembled. Right now, let's look into some literature. We've got a poster right here. We're going to look at the booklet first. Page one, page two, page three, four, page five, Six, seven, eight, well that's just DCL2s, nine and ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 9 and 10, 13, 14, 15, that's just DCL2s as well here, oh that's page 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24, and there's a back of it. Now for the informative poster. I'm just going to slowly show you this, guys, and then you can just pause the video as you read along.
Now, a lot of people might not like the BCO one, but I certainly think it's a very cool, unique vacuum cleaner, especially for its time. Thank you all for watching the DCO1 educational video by Power786.